Hello, my name is Hassan uh, and I'm gonna teach you in this short video how to use Google Colab and doing some uh, Python stuff inside it. Uh, hopefully this video would be uh, useful for students in CS3190, uh, uh, which is Foundation of Data Analysis course at the University of Utah in Esclav Computing. And the professor is uh, Professor Jeff Phillips. So I'm gonna share my screen to start uh, whatever um, I want to cover here. So uh, I'm gonna starting uh, start with um, Google, my Google Drive. You can go to your Google Drive with drive.google.com slash drive slash my drive. Uh, I have my file here. Okay, uh, if I double click, it would be open. You don't need um, to use this downloading. Uh, you can use just this one to open your file. Mm. Uh, I guess uh, the professor will provide you with the link into this file so you can use um, this, uh, this file with uh, using file if you uh, if you use file, then you can see uh, save a copy in Drive. So with this uh, option, you, you will have this file in your Google Drive and you can do whatever I, I'm doing here and you can run the code. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna switch to the full screen mode. Um, Okay, um, what we, uh, we're gonna cover here is uh, how to set up the Google Drive account as a virtual drive, how to import uh, files from our local drive to Google Drive, how to uh, read these files from Google Drive, how to visualize data um, in a um, tabled format, uh, and in Google Colab, uh, and how to download files from Colab, how to do some elementary operations in Python using NumPy in Colab, and finally, how to plot a function in Colab, uh, in Python using Colab. Okay. Uh, I will use uh, two uh, data sets here. Uh, they are, uh, I guess uh, you will have a link to download that with, um, by the professor, but uh, I um, I put them in my GitHub. You can see here the link. If you uh, follow this link, you will uh, see, um, for example, this uh, green button. If you push, you can see download zip. You can download the file then you will download this folder that includes uh, two data sets that are in CSV format. And also uh, this file, uh, which is uh, what uh, I'm using uh, as a code. Okay, so uh, you, need, you will need uh, to, uh, download um, at least those two data sets and copy and paste in your uh, Google Drive. It's easy, just use, um, just use copy and paste, control C and control V, or uh, for example, here is my Google Drive, or just, uh, just uh, drag the file and uh, it would be, uh, it will be copied here. Okay. Uh, 
and then uh, I switch to the full screen mode. Okay, now uh, I've imported some libraries that we need here. Uh, the first uh, one, which is the most important one is NumPy library, which is uh, suitable uh, for computing stuff. And I've used uh, NP as a shorthand. Uh, and then uh, we have a linear algebra library, um, pandas, random, uh, pandas uh, are important for um, visualization, for example, visualization of data in a uh, table format. And also um, we have these two, uh, which are important for drawing. Uh, you see this uh, button here, which is uh, run button. If you press this one, this shell should be uh, run. Okay. Uh, or you can use us if your pointer is here, you can use us shift enter to run that one, that shell. Okay. Now important uh, importing files from Google Drive. What you need is mounting uh, Google Drive. It means setting uh, up in the Google Drive account as a virtual drive. Uh, in this way, you can access to your files that are in your Google Drive. It's easy, just uh, you can uh, run these uh, two lines of code. Uh, these two lines of code, uh, one of them is from google.colab import drive and then drive.mount. This is the, ad, uh, the address of your Google Drive, okay? If I press shift enter here, you see there is a link here you should follow this link and it it needs your permission you choose your um, google account and then you should allow um, and then you you see here there is a, a password you can copy it by using this okay now this is copied uh, I'm gonna paste it here using Control V and then press Enter. Okay, now as you see, my uh, Google Drive is mounted. Okay, so uh, it means I can access my files from my Google Drive. Okay, the two data sets that um, I mentioned. Um, uh, we're gonna use here are from Kaggle. You can uh, see also, you can uh, download, for example, from this link, but uh, I've um, made them a little simpler because they are, uh, their size is a little high and I lowered the size by removing some rows and columns to, to be easy to work with here. Um, Okay, now that uh, you have uh, your, uh, those data sets in your Google Drive, you can uh, access them. Let's uh, first visualize them by using um, pandas. Uh, PD is for a shorthand for pandas. You can use uh, that read underline CSV and then you, you should give the address for your file because in the data is in my drive, my Google Drive. Uh, this should be um, the, other, the address for my file. So if I use shift enter, uh, as you see, I have my uh, file, my data here, which is a nice formatted. Uh, the table formatted version, and you can scroll to see all the uh, data here. If you want to just visualize some of them, for example, five of them, you can use this um, uh, colon, uh, for example, five, then you will see only five of them. As you see, this is zero to four. So, 
you can see only five of them. Um, another thing is if you if you have a folder here, for example, you can uh, use new folder to um, to create a folder here, and then like this one that I have here, um, I have both uh, both data sets also here. If you want to uh, have uh, your data from that folder, you need to add this uh, the name of the folder also before the name of data. So uh, here I use data one, but here I'm using data. Um, uh, which is the next data set uh, and we will be uh, we will use this one more okay so you can access to folders inside your google drive by this way um, there is another way uh, uh, which is importing data from your computer uh, directly uh, you can use these uh, two lines of codes, which are very simple. And then if you run this shell, you will see a choose files button. If you press this one, you can go uh, to your um, computers and you browse and, uh, and browse whatever you want. For example, I want to and browse data one and I press open it's imported as you see and it's easy just uh, two lines of codes and which are mm, just two words and then I can visualize again by pd read underline sv the top five rows are these uh, and these are the same as we had here Okay, um, and then uh, it's uh, maybe you need to download um, files from Colab into uh, your computer. Uh, for example, if you uh, if you uh, have already uh, run a code and get your results, and you want to import. Um, you want to send your results to somebody or to save in your computer it's just uh, again uh, running these two lines of codes uh, just importing files and then files.download and then give the address if the file is in your google drive you should uh, give this address and then the name of the file um, let's Mm. do this one as you see uh, the file is downloaded and if the file is in a folder inside your google drive so the address should be like this uh, you have to um, add the name of the folder here and if you do this also sometimes it needs uh, allowing so you can allow and it uh, it is downloaded and as you, as you can see both of them are in my uh, downloads okay uh, okay mm. How to okay mm. so you can download whatever you need uh, okay and now it's time to start mm, doing some uh, computational uh, stuff in colab i'm gonna uh, do a regression a simple uh, regression. The reason I um, I've chosen this uh, topic is that mostly students are familiar with regression, and at least in this course, um, uh, you had regression, and so you are familiar. So you don't need to follow uh, mathematics behind the uh, 
uh, behind what's going on on here. Okay. Mm, you need to have. Um, you need to know how to define a function here. Uh, the role, uh, the three letters D, E, F, def, uh, are for um, definition of a function. So if you use def, and then this is the name of the function, and this is the variable. Um, so uh, you can uh, you can write whatever function you need here, but uh, we we're interested in reading files from our Google Drive or Colab. So we need um, this uh, this uh, line of code. Uh, which is provided by Python, with open uh, the variable, which is file name, and R means reading, okay? Mm, and then as F, so uh, with open file, uh, we have it as F. So uh, for uh, each line in F, it means each row in your um, file, in your data, uh, I'm going to use line that is strip that is split by comma, uh, which means uh, which means you should have your uh, first row, for example, is uh, the one that uh, I'm gonna uh, add to data, for example. Uh, so it means um, separating uh, rows by comma uh, as a simple. Um, as a simple way. Uh, and then I'm, uh, I had a data uh, which is a variable and with an empty uh, array uh, or list. And I'm going to append um, this item, but empty array of this item. I want to have NumPy array, arrays here because uh, using them in computation is really easier than using regular arrays or lists in Python. Okay, so I run this function. Uh, so I can use this function to read my data. Now, um, we have X and Y in uh, regression. X are our data and Y are uh, their values. Okay. Uh, data, uh, I'm gonna use this read file function here to read my data from Google, my Google Drive. Uh, as you see, I'm gonna use read file with the address of my file. Uh, afterwards, uh, I, we, uh, we will use data, uh, we will use data file, not data one file. Um, for our regression uh, task. So uh, if just uh, put it as a variable like data, which is because it's our data. So uh, I call it data. Uh, let's see what's the length of our data. You can use len function, len of data. It's 84, as you see, and then Mm. If I uh, if I uh, want to see what's my data, as you see, it's uh, it consists of arrays, but arrays of strings. They are strings, not numbers. Okay, so I want to, uh, for example, to make it short. Uh, just see one of them. Uh, I want, and also, uh, if you take a look, it's um, it's in the direction of y uh, in increasing, 2.4, 2.52, 2 and and so on. So uh, it's not a good idea to have, for example. Uh, some part, uh, for example, 70 or 75 percent of the first part of the data as, and let's say, uh, 
uh, as training data for regression. So uh, what I need is shuffling the data. Uh, I use random.shuffle function here, which is provided as a built-in function in Python to shuffle my data. And then uh, again, I call uh, the array of data as data. So uh, if, uh, if I visualize the data, now it's not uh, in a uh, sorted way. For example, here is 3.38. Here it goes down 3.08 and then goes up and so on. So in this way, we can use, for example, some part of the data from uh, start as training data. So what, this is why I use random.shuffle. Uh, okay, uh, as you see, we have two values here. One of them is, this is X, and the second one, uh, the second component is Y value. So uh, I can use um, data uh, colon and then comma and zero. It means uh, I need, uh, for example, if I need for uh, uh, it means uh, I need uh, only the first column, okay, zero. And this means I need the first, uh, the second column. Uh, the first column's index is zero, and the second column, the second column index is one. So uh, uh, I have x values. These are first column is my x values, and second uh, column is my y values. Okay. So as you see, if um, I visualize, for example x values for example five of them you can see they are strings i need to change them uh, to numbers okay so uh, i use um, first i initialize a variable to uh, to be uh, an array of zeros with the length of my uh, variable x values, my data of x. And then um, I use float function. Float means um, float, uh, float's input is a, a string of numbers and then it outputs the number uh, without its, uh, the uh, quotation mark. So it's uh, it should be number so uh, if if we want to visualize our data of x x data uh, you see x values are now numbers and you can do it um, for y and so they are again numbers uh, we can't use um, strings in uh, our computational tests in python um, okay, now I want to um, do uh, split uh, the data to um, train and test, and I'm going to use uh, 75 versus 20 percent, 25 percent for train and test. Uh, as uh, as uh, I did before, uh, the data is shuffled, so I don't need to randomly choose. Uh, I can just um, uh, use 75% of uh, the data from the uh, zero to, uh, for example, uh, 30, uh, 63, um, uh, which is, you know, the 75% of 84. 84 was our data's length, our data's length. Uh, so uh, we have training and test data here and uh, in their corresponding labels, uh, I mean y values. Uh, okay, and now uh, we want to do linear regression. 
as you know from the course, uh, X bar or X average is the average of X values. Y average is the average of Y values. And X bar is this vector. Y bar uh, is, sorry, this should be uh, Y. Um, y1 minus y bar. Uh, so we're just subtracting the mean of x and y's. And then the formula for linear regression, which is L of x uh, equal to a times x plus b. A and b can be computed from this dot product of these two vectors um, and then divided by the normal uh, the squared normal x bar, and then b can be computed from this formula. We have uh, these uh, in in the textbook. So um, I'm uh, I'm just writing whatever we have here. Uh, I put n as the length of our training data, and then x average is uh, sum of my train data. This sum is a built-in function in Python, so you can use it to uh, sum all values in your array and then use dividing by n, which is this formula, and do the same for y uh, and y, uh, y to get the average of y values. Then uh, we can have uh, y bar and x bar vectors here. Uh, just, just doing this because um, you know because um, our uh, we are in NumPy setting, so you just uh, you can um, for for uh, calculating x bar here, uh, you can just um, subtract x average, which is a number from uh, the vector of x. So um, subtracting a, vec uh, a number from a vec uh, from a array from an array uh, in Python is possible, but uh, your array should be a numpy array. Okay, so, and you can have the same for y bar. Um, and then, the formula for a, which is the dot product of x bar and y bar. So np dot dot is a numpy function uh, that gives us the dot product of two vectors, uh, x bar and y bar. And then I divided it by the norm of x bar to the two, which is this formula here. Okay, and mm, uh, la dot norm is a function from linear algebra library and uh, that uh, computes uh, norm of a uh, vector. I mean, L2 norm of the vector. Uh, so if we run this we can visualize A and B, A is this number and B is this number. Okay, uh, after that, uh, I'm interested in um, calculating residual vectors residual vector or residual values, uh, which is defined by R, R to be Y minus Y hat. Y hat is our prediction through the regression line, which means Y, um, y I hat is, Y I hat is just plugging in the xi into uh, the linear function uh, we got from regression. Okay, so uh, what we can do here is uh, we can initialize a, an array of zeros here. 21 is the 25% of um, 84, which is for our test data. That's exactly the length of our test data. And as you can see from here, we can uh, have 
uh, y hat values by multiplying a into the test data uh, test data and then uh, adding the bias term b and then we can uh, just using a four here is suitable for example uh, using a for loop here rent means a uh, number should uh, four should be repeated uh, repeated between zero and twenty uh, so it's, it's just um, uh, like any uh, four in any other languages okay so if we, uh, we run this shell we can have y hat values for our test data or uh, instead of if you want to ignore um, using for loop uh, to avoid using for loop you can um, use this formula here which is nice you know because this is a, a numpy array as you see when you hover uh, on this variable you can see this is a, a, a numpy array so you can use what i said before you use adding a number or multiplying a number um, with, uh, with a uh, array it, it will give you the same values if we run as you see they are both the same okay then um, residual vector uh, again can be computed in a vectorized form it means i am we can subtract two uh, arrays and they will be subtracted correspondingly so our residual vector is this one which is uh, of length 21 uh, and lastly, uh, I'm going to talk about um, plotting data. We can use uh, PLT. Uh, and, you know, we imported PLT as you see here, which is Matplot library uh, for scatter plot, uh, for example. Uh, so we can use plt.p uh, scatter. And then we can give our x values, which are data train, and our y values, which are y train, to visualize our uh, training data. And the same for uh, test data. Uh, but uh, we have color here, which uh, I've set to red. Uh, the default color here is blue. Uh, blue. So uh, we don't need uh, for the first one to add a color. So our training data would be in, uh, in blue and the test data would be in red. And uh, we can use uh, this command plt.show to visualize our scatter plot. So as you see, these blue uh, bullets are our training data and Mm -hmm. the red ones are our test data and as you can can see uh, our test data is uh, spread over um, all over the data it's not for example concentrated in some parts like here if we didn't use shuffling shuffle shuffling data uh, for example uh, uh, until uh, here uh, it would be all blue and um, here uh, we we could have uh, our test data which is not suitable for doing linear regression okay and now uh, we need uh, we need our function uh, which is l of x uh, equal to a times x plus b our linear regression function uh, because we need this uh, to be defined in terms of uh, code um, then uh, because we need it uh, for plotting the function so i uh, defined this function uh, which is relatively easy just um, use the same method for definition of the function uh, this re returns us uh, a times x plus b which is the formula for this function okay 
uh, and then uh, I use these uh, two same uh, plotting functions here from here uh, to have these in the background and then uh, I use uh, I use a uh, lean space uh, or LIN space which is a built-in function from NumPy for dividing um, an interval, for example, to tw from 1600 uh, uh, to 2100 uh, with grading uh, of 200 steps. So uh, we can use uh, plt.plot to um, draw our function, uh, you need to give uh, this x least uh, as our x values and then uh, our y values uh, are, uh, let's say, uh, the function values, what, whatever we predicted here for. In fact, the, these are our y hat values, okay? Uh, but uh, this is again the function, our linear function applied to these values here. And then I use G, uh, this is uh, color, which means green. I want to have my color in green. And this is the line width, which I've set to two. You can use one, two, three, whatever you need. And again, we need plt.show, which is for visualization. So as you see, uh, our data uh, training and test data are in background, and we have this line as our regression line, uh, which is great. Okay. Uh, as a recap, what, uh, what we talked about, uh, in fact, we covered the following, how to, um, how to set up the Google Drive account as a virtual drive, how to import files from our local drive to Google Drive, how to read files from Google Drive in Colab, how to visualize data uh, in a tabled format using Pandas, how to download files from Colab, and how to do some elementary operations in Python using NumPy arrays, for example. Uh, and lastly, how to plot a function in Python. Okay, I hope uh, this uh, would be useful for, uh, on, for the course uh, and for students. Thank you.